What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. I am Nicholas. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. It's Friday, so you know we're heading into a mock draft on draft.com, on the draft app. I actually already tried to do this once, but I accidentally started a slow draft. We recreated it. We're about to hit create, boom, and whoever the 11 lucky subscribers are can come and draft with your boy. If you are new to draft.com, this is where we will be filming today's mock draft 2019 fantasy football mock draft every single friday so stay tuned subscribe to the channel if you're new we're putting out other videos five days a week as well to help you prep for your 2019 fantasy football season wow that filled up quick boys got some clout all right so this is how it's going to go it's a 12 teamer half ppr on draft.com it is august so it's time to start prepping for your draft there is literally no better place to do your mock drafts to prep for your draft than draft.com Literally open up a new tab right now. If you're on your laptop, hit Command-T, Control-T. If you're a weirdo and use Windows, type in draft.com, sign up, use promo code BDGE. When you sign up, you'll get $3 to draft with. So if you're unfamiliar with best ball, basically you draft your team. You don't make any in-season moves. Realistically, I've actually drafted over a hun- I've drafted over 100 teams already on draft.com, which some of you might consider a problem. I also fall into that some of you because that's definitely a problem i need to stop drafting probably but that also means that i've been able to witness uh, a lot of the trends going on in fantasy football so we're going to talk about a lot of the stuff that's going on in the preseason right now hella hamstring injuries it is is officially hammy season as you already know from dr morse coming on a lot of these players go into the summer unprepared or you know you can't practice nfl speed practice speed game speed prior to really getting onto the field. So a lot of their muscles are not equipped to handle what they see in the beginning practices. Um, Damn, bro, I got to stop recording during, I got to just turn off my text messages. It's very, very frustrating. Anyways, listen, 12 teamer, I have the seventh pick. Barkley, C-Mac, bro, I just said stop texting. Barkley, C-Mac, Kamara, Dave Johnson, Devontae Adams, first five off the board. Zeke is dropping. People are scared about the holdout. I think they get a deal done. I know the sides are not close, and I'm probably being a little bit ignorant here. But Zeke's down in Cabo, enjoying his life, as he should be. He's a thick running back with a, about to have a big bankroll. There we go. Zeke went off at 6. So I'm sitting here at 7, and there's no way I'm reaching up for a running back at this point, especially not Le'Veon Bell. I've been very vocal about Le'Veon Bell. I just think it's a, a bad offense, a bad offensive line. At the end of the day, too, like, Adam Gase came out and literally said that he did not like the signing. He did not want the signing. So he has no loyalty to a guy like Le'Veon Bell. If if he's inefficient, which I expect him to be in a subpar offense with a subpar offensive line, if he starts averaging 3.8, 3.9 yards per carry, maybe Tymont gets on the field on third downs or Elijah McGuire gets a little bit of early work. You never know what can happen, but I... They paid him a lot of money, but listen, man, I, I don't know. Everything in my gut tells me to stay away from Le'Veon, especially at 1-7. So between Hopkins, it would be... Be- it would probably be between Hopkins and Travis Kelsey. I know it's early for a lot of people on Travis Kelsey, but, bro, the positional advantage he gives you um, week over week is just so nice. I think in a half PPR setting, he's so far and away above a guy like Zach Ertz or a guy like George Kittle. So I like Kelsey there. But um, when we look at what else is going on in the first round, it, it, this is a crazy year for the first round because if you're towards, like, the, you know, eight or nine, originally when the summer started, I was I was pretty excited to be at – at that point of the draft but now you're seeing because i thought a lot of value was going to fall to me but a lot of the top tier guys right you're seeing Gurley's off the board in the first round melvin gordon's off the board in the first round zeke's holding out um we have a lot of these uh, you know joe mixon lost two of his offensive linemen already so a lot of these guys that like you kind of liked um to grab early on just have a bunch of question marks and things start to get a little messy so you might not have value fall to you so i got this question a lot where is my favorite spot to um to draft from, sorry, y'all, to draft from. And again, it's always going to be that top. I I would probably like the third spot. I don't really know what's happening to Zeke. I do think that he will get that extension. But either way, I think three is pretty good. You're going to end up with C-Mac, Barkley, Zeke, if he resigns, or Kamara. So I like the three spot the most. I'd like to have my team anchored with the top running back. However, 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 if you're towards the back half of the first round, you're probably going to have to start looking at the wide receivers because that's where the values are. You're seeing the elite wide receivers with um, with a really good floor. Now, we get to an interesting spot here at the 2-6. 
Melvin Gordon's still on the board. I'm, you know, my mindset with Melvin Gordon, I'll get into in a second. I just want to make my pick. Wow, Gurley's ADP is still at 17, huh? He's not a second-round pick for me. Damian Williams is creeping up. Um, he's dealing with a hamstring injury. Antonio Brown, Mike Evans I like. Uh, kind of want to diversify into the running back situation because I already went with a wide receiver in the first round. And necessarily that's not, you know, I don't go into drafts thinking like, okay, I'm going to go running back, wide receiver, running back, wide receiver over the first four picks because that's a strategy. And I'm going to make a video, I think, next Wednesday's video might be like the top five or ten biggest mistakes I see fantasy football players make. Let me know if you'd want to see a video like that, more uh, strategy-driven than actual player analysis. Going into your drafts, thinking about exactly what positions you're going to take, it, that usually doesn't work past like pick 14 or 15 because players start getting skewed and players are going in spots that you wouldn't have expected them. So now, you know, if you're set on taking a wide receiver and if you're at the end of the second round, um, some of them might maybe went off the board, right? And then if you're going to do that, if you're set on doing that, you might be forced to take like an Adam Thielen and you're like, I don't want to do that. So don't go into a draft knowing exactly positional players that you want to take. Um, wow. The, the Marlon Mack hype is just put him above Mike Evans. That, uh, Woo! Okay, so let's talk about some other some other players with, with injuries right now. We obviously heard the A.J. Green news. I've been very vocal about this. He was not a good pick prior. He's got to be off your draft board now. He's going to miss multiple games. They said at best he's going to miss just a couple games, which means probably going to be on the pup. Just just stay away. I'm pretty sure I have zero, 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 zero market share of A.J. Green in these drafts. Thank God. Um, but we're seeing a lot of these mid-round running backs dealing with hamstring injuries, man. So Damien Williams dealing with a hamstring injury. Carlos Hyde is getting first team reps. It's not something I'm overly concerned about. Not something that Dr. Morse is overly concerned about. Um, any hamstring injuries are things to monitor. You know, I always say like, I want to see them rest for like three weeks and then them get about three full practices in a row before I'm comfortable taking them or starting them in season. So we have Damien Williams dealing with one. Um, Aaron Jones. I don't know if a lot of people actually saw this, but I saw a tweet that Aaron Jones has been sitting out with a hamstring injury as well. Same thing goes for him. Um, his backfield mate, Jamal Williams, is also sitting out with a hamstring injury. So that might be an issue as well, which means Dexter Williams, the rookie out of Notre Dame, is getting a lot of first team reps. I think Dexter Williams will probably take Jamal Williams' role. And it makes sense. Um, I'm going to dive deep into Aaron Jones on Monday's video. So stay tuned for that which will probably be, I think, my breakout running backs video. But when we look at Dexter Williams, he fits into that running back by committee that the Packers like, where he's bigger in size, right? 5'11", 2'12", 2'15"-ish. Um, and he showed some good breakaway runs at Notre Dame. I didn't think he was that talented of a prospect at all, but when you look at, like, Jamal Williams, it's like, you know, what the fuck is Jamal Williams? What is Jamal Williams to a god? You know what I'm saying? So... Jamal Williams is probably going to be played out of the lineup. And that will open up a lot of touches for Aaron Jones to dominate that backfield in a running back by committee, which I think still think it will be, but I'm fine with that, right? If they use him in the right role, um, get him involved in the pass catching game a lot and maybe have Dexter Williams take eight carries a game. I'm completely fine with that. Look at the rest of the um, middle round though, Melvin Gordon. So the way I see it right now, if I, you know, gun to head, if I had to put my money on what happens with Melvin Gordon, I think he sits out as much as he can into the season. Um, I, I believe that's eight games or, or up until week eight. So if, if I had to, you know, choose exactly what's happening with Melvin Gordon, I would put money on him sitting out until week eight confidence level, probably like a six out of six and a half to seven out of 10. All of the reports are saying that these two are not even close to a deal. And Melvin Gordon, like, can sit out till week seven or eight, and it really wouldn't affect him at all going towards free agency next year. So I'm kind of hoping Damian Williams falls to me here. There we go. So Damian Williams is dealing with a hamstring injury. I still think that all everything coming out of KC is just like, Damian Williams is the guy. He's the guy. He's the, he's the guy. He's the guy. Um, and, you know, I talked about this in Fade the Public's video yesterday that Damian Williams has never had that workhorse role, right? And when you project him into the season, a lot of people get really high on him. Everyone knows the ceiling being in this offense. However, when I project the risk into it, I'm not saying he's an injury risk. Like, he's, he's not injury prone like a guy like De uh, Devonta Freeman or a Leonard Fournette. 
based on concussion history and lower leg injuries and tendons and ligaments and actual fucking science behind it. But the fact that we've never seen him actually hold up over a full season means that his body might not be able to handle that. We don't know if it can. So it's not necessarily predicting or, you know, saying that he's more injury prone than a lot of these players um, going around the same spot as him, but just that's factored into the risk. So if Damian Williams goes six or seven weeks and is dominating and then gets hurt and you faded him, because of all these red flags around him, I, I would consider that a win because, you know, those are some of the risks that are involved in in, um, in drafting a guy that's never actually shown up over the course of an entire season. He's on breakout, right, the last five weeks of the season or whatever, including the playoffs. But he's never had more than 50 carries in a regular season. He's always been a backup or a backup to a backup. So, I don't know. That should tell you something. But I like Damian Williams. I like everything we're hearing out of camp. So if he starts falling to the end of the third round, I'm okay taking the leap on that, um, even with him dealing with the hamstring injury. Then we have Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is an interesting case, right? He's The reports started going around, you know, he was in a walking boot, and we've since learned that he has a strained calf. And I'll talk about Derrick Henry once we get back into the the flow of things. I want to make my pick here. And this is also another reason why I really, really like hitting running backs early on and I'm glad I got two running backs in the first three rounds because the value at wide receiver down here is so so damn good like if I can get I'm going to be able to get either Julian Edelman or Robert Woods or even Kenny Galladay worst case Tyler Lockett I love all these guys at the end of the fourth round mid to end of the fourth round I am absolutely fine with that Robert Woods good snipe um See with tight ends. Yeah, I'm probably waiting on tight end. I like, you know, I like the value of Kelsey in the first or second. I like Ertz and Kittle in the third. I like OJ in the fourth. End of the day, I don't like how my team really ends up if I do end up reaching there. I'd rather have my wide receiver two in these rounds. I don't have a lot of Julian Edelman. Am I concerned with his injury? Um, no, I'm not concerned with his injury really whatsoever. Because it's not like he's someone who needs the reps at training camp. It's not like he's someone who doesn't know the offense, the complicated offense. Like, he's going to come back be fine and be slotted right into that role so with Edelman I'm not I'm not worried whatsoever about the injury um back to Derrick Henry so he has that strained calf and guys the strained calf is very much like a hamstring like these things need to rest for a long time and then you need to see him get back on it I will compare this situation to Jarek McKinnon last summer I was super high on Jarek McKinnon I think I put out a video in maybe July, like my top three breakout running backs. It was Joe Mixon, it was Sony Michelle, and the third one was Jarek McKinnon. Then he pulled then he strained his calf muscle in the beginning of August. And I said, I remember in multiple videos afterwards, I was like, you have to move Jarek McKinnon really fucking far down your draft boards. Because just like a hamstring injury, these are serious, right? They're not physically serious at the time, but they're serious in terms of lingering. If you come back too early, you're gonna re injure it or have a compensation injury. So with Derrick Henry, you know, Jarek McKinnon pulled the, ca- uh, pulled the calf, they rested him, he came back too early, and then tore his ACL. Was, were the two related? I'm not really sure, but if I had to put money on it, I would, I would probably say yes. And I'm, I'm pretty sure Dr. Morse at one point said that um, they were probably related, and that's probably the reason why it happened. So with Derrick Henry, he definitely moved down my draft board a little bit, which is kind of unfortunate because I was finally coming around to the idea that I kind of like Derrick Henry a little bit at like the end of the third if you haven't taken a running back yet he's a guy who has who has a chance of leading the league in rushing yards for sure um i still don't buy into that offense whatsoever so the game script might not actually be in place um he's basically like marlon mack but on a shitty offense so if you're deciding between those two i don't even think it's a fucking i don't even think there's an argument to be made to be honest um so Derrick Henry, strain calf. That this is something to really closely monitor. I know you might not think it's serious, and there might be reports. I'll hold be back in a week or two. But listen, man, this is a serious injury, and if he comes back too early, there's a very high chance of it lingering or re-injuring itself. I believe there was a couple of doctors on Twitter that said optimal rest time was between four to six weeks. That's pretty significant um, time to sit out, and it's Derrick Henry, so we don't need to see him play in training camp or see him play in the preseason games or whatever. So that's not a concern of mine, um, but. That makes me love a guy like Deion Lewis a lot more because he's already getting the receiving workload. So that will, you know, boost his rushing workload if Derrick Henry maybe is at like 85% going into the season. They're going to lean on Lewis a little bit more. He's one of my highest owned running backs, I believe, in drafts, which is nice at this time. We also have Tariq Hill with the Bruce quad. As far as I'm concerned, this is not a big deal whatsoever. Um, Dr. Moore said the same thing. We're not concerned. They got plenty of time to heal that. It shouldn't take long to heal. 
What else we got going on? Oh, man, dude. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I need to hear some positive fucking Andrew Luck news ASAP. Because this calf thing is scaring the shite out of me. OJ Howard, fall to me. Dylan, don't you, don't you fucking snipe me. I'm going to block you. And I'm going to report you for harassment if you fucking take OJ Howard right now. Yo, yeah, yo. Yeah. All right, so we waited till the end of the fifth, and normally I feel like you have to take Howard at the end of the fourth-ish, even though I kind of like, oh, DJ Moore is a fucking... Okay, so Tyler Boyd, I meant, not DJ Moore. End of the fifth round, I'm all in on Boyd. Um, and I'm not going to argue with y'all about how he was worth with AJ Green, because Wednesday's video was my must-on wide receivers, and I broke down Tyler Boyd to a very deep, significant level, showing the splits when it was with... Andy Dalton, but without AJ Green, because everyone wants to go very surface level and talk about the splits. And I also get a lot of questions about, you know, where do we find the splits? And this is an app on Rotoviz, which is a very cool app if you've never used it before. Um, unfortunately, they did make it a paid subscription. Kind of heartbreaking because they used to have it for free, but it is paid now. I do think it's worth it if you are, you know, a serious fantasy football player or a dynasty player for sure. And this is where you can find all those splits that you probably see on Twitter all the time. There you go. Howard went off. Hunter Henry went off. I'm surprised they're going behind. Oh, no. Evan, Evan Ingram already went off. Okay. I was going to say I would have fucking loved for Evan Ingram to fall a little bit with all the injuries going on there. So, um, this is where you can get those splits, right? And this is a, such a cool fucking app. So Tyler Boyd in games that A.J. Green also played. We'll look at the 2018 season. You know what? Did they have any games that they didn't play together? No, they played all of them together. 2018, you see just the raw splits, right? You're seeing PPR, big split. But still, without him, he was good. But that doesn't take into account that Jeff Driscoll was the quarterback for like four of those games when A.J. Green was out as well. So that obviously needs to be taken into context. Now, when we're in the sixth round, and I say this every week in the best ball drafts, best ball, guys, if, again, if you're new and you haven't drafted on, on draft.com, highly, highly, highly recommend you do so. Go to the App Store. It's on Google Play. It's on iOS. Grab the draft app. Download it. If you throw $10 into this, you can do 10 $1 drafts, which means all of your opponents will be drafting extremely seriously, and you'll get really good practice for your drafts that are probably upcoming in the next couple weeks. When you do that, sign up with promo code BDGE. You will get an extra $3 on top of the $10 that you put it, and you will be set. You could do two drafts a week up until your draft, and you will be completely good to go. With best ball, though, you start one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, and a tight end. Draft.com automatically... Um, automatically starts the best players at each position. So it is a one quarterback league. However, the reason you wait on quarterbacks in season long leagues is because the waiver wire is there. There are no trades, no in season moves, no waiver wire. So you want to make sure you have an elite option at the quarterback position in a league like this because, you know, if you do end up going with, oh, I'm just going to go with Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen later on in the draft, sure, but their bust rates are probably pretty high compared to other quarterbacks. If they bust, if Lamar Jackson gets hurt in week six or something, then literally all you have is Josh Allen in that place. And if Josh Allen has like six point games, seven point games, if he gets hurt, there are bye weeks, you're missing out on a lot of points. So you want to have one stable, really good quarterback, in my opinion. Um, so I'm not really trying to fade the quarterback. And anytime we're in the sixth, seventh round and I can get one of those elite quarterbacks, I go for it. Now, Andrew Luck, as I was mentioning before, scaring the shit out of me. Andrew Luck. I'm terrified of that calf injury. It might not seem serious. Well, let's look at the draft guide. Um, if you haven't caught the draft guide already, one, I don't know what the fuck he was doing, but two, you should do that right now. BigDogsDraftGuide.com. Literally everything you need to prep for your fantasy football draft. In here, we have the injury reports from Dr. Morse. Any relevant player... What the heck is this? Oh, eh. uh, I cleared my cookies and stuff. Zan, I played myself. <sighs> Give me a second, people. We'll see what's going on in the draft. Dante Pettis. Wow, Marquez Valdez Scanling in the fucking sixth round. You, ah, man, I, I cannot condone that stuff. When listen, I like these players, but I like ADPs more. Like. 
you, you guys know I've been raving about a guy like Marquez Valdez-Scantling. You guys know I like a guy like Austin Eckler and Christian Kirk and players like this, but they lose all of their value. What if Marquez Valdez-Scantling just becomes the wide receiver three in this offense, and I'm wrong and Geronimo Allison is the wide receiver two? Like, sixth round is, is too early, in my opinion, to start going for guys like that. You love ADPs. You don't love players. Wise words to live by. Andrew Luck finally went off the board. All right, let's get this thing going. So we have Andrew Luck here, and right now, Dr. Morris had him as a 4 out of 10 in terms of injury concern. We have every player that's somewhat injury-related, and he writes a big-ass write-up, and then... Um, concern level, the injury risk rating for that quarterback. So with Andrew, Andrew Luck, he said he's not overly concerned. Uh, I am probably the one that's overly concerned here. I'll talk about him in a second. We have not gotten a tight end. Are there any elite options left on the board? Not really. That's like its own tier. So I'm going to let them fall in the seventh. Uh, I'm a big fan of Latavius Murray here, even though he's missed some time. Latavius Murray's been missing time with, uh, okay, they took Lamar Miller. Fantastic. I didn't get it in in time. Guys, if you're in a fast draft, make sure you have the app open on your phone. Um, so, so. Davis Murray is missing some time. Dynasty Leagues. If no one has picked up Divine Ozigbo in your Dynasty League, make sure you do so. He, is, he was one of my favorite running backs coming out of, um, coming out in this class. And the, the, the 40-yard dash on here is definitely incorrect. I've asked them multiple times where they got the 4-7 from, and they've never answered me. But coming out of Nebraska, he's a big size guy. And he was really good in college, Ivano Zigbo. 5'11", 222, so he's got that. Everywhere I look, everywhere I look that had his official pro day numbers are between the 4'5 and 4'55". So I have no idea where they got this 4'7 from. I can't find it anywhere, and I've asked them where. But if you go by the official pro day numbers and you put it into here, his speed score, his weight-adjusted speed score, shoots up to like the 85th percentile. And then you're looking at a guy with great speed, great burst, Someone who was in the 69th percentile for college target share at a Power 5 school in Nebraska. Yards per carry, 7.1 yards per carry, 51% or 51st percentile college dominator. Like, Devon Zigbo needs to be picked up stat. Now, I do love Latavius Murray. I think he's going to have a monster role in this offense when he's healthy. And I'd say the over-under for him on rushing touchdowns is probably like 8. Um, so he's a great best ball option because you don't actually have to decide the weeks that he starts, right? This software automatically starts the best players each week for you at that position. So I think Latavius Murray is a fantastic best ball option. I think he's a great season-long option as well. Um, now, one thing I love doing, one thing that is a very good strategy in, in best ball drafts is stacking players. And by that, it's the quarterback and either the wide receiver or the tight end. Now, Geronimo Allison is sitting here. We know he's going to play the slot. MVS went like 17 picks early. So uh, I will probably settle for Geronimo Allison as my fourth wide receiver. And... That way, we stack Aaron Rodgers with Geronimo Allison. At the moment, we have... Let's look at the team. Aaron Rodgers, Dalvin Cook, Damian Williams, DeAndre Hopkins, Julian Edelman, Tyler Boyd, Lamar Miller, Geronimo Allison. I like that team so far. I like it a lot. We'll have to see how I end up with tight ends. Um, Lamar Miller, I haven't talked about him at all this offseason. The way I look at it is this is a good offense with a semi-improved offensive line. But at the end of the day, like... Lamar Miller was, you literally couldn't have been in a better situation than he was last year from a volume standpoint. There was nobody to compete with him at running back. Um, and he still was like, you know, he, he did well for a few games. He had a few like breakaway runs that really made him um, a good fantasy pick in a lot of people's minds. But at the end of the day, he finished with five rushing touchdowns. Had Look how many games, like 10 yards, 49 yards, 46 yards, 21, 33 yards, 8 yards, 56 yards, 18 yards. Like He had a large, large majority of games that were super disappointing. Then he had four four games of over 100 rushing yards. So you're like, okay, he was good. But for the most part, he wasn't really that good. And that was with literally no competition against him. So, um, you know, when I'm looking at that, if you just throw one more wrench into the whole fucking equation, it's not looking good for Lamar Miller. I think he's going to end up as like a, like maybe a flex play and might even start getting out touched by Deonta Foreman. I'm not high on Deonta Foreman just because, you know, we've really never seen someone come back from an Achilles injury, especially at the running back position. They lose their explosion. But he's two years removed from it now, so maybe we will see them, you know, have a legit timeshare. And if Lamar Miller's in a legit timeshare, there's no way he's giving you any kind of return on fantasy value. Um, 
if you are in dynasty leagues and you're about to do a startup, do not draft Lamar Miller, please. He's probably going to be finished. Like this is definitely his last year of any sort of fantasy relevance. What else do we got? What else do we got? I love, you know what I love about training camp is like every single report that comes out, it could be the most fucking irrelevant report, shoots ADPs up and down. Like I'm pretty sure Philip Lindsay was was getting to the point where he was like a late sixth round pick and Royce Freeman was an early seventh round pick. And it will be like, Philip Lindsay took the first carry at, at training camp and then Philip Lindsay shoots up two rounds and Royce Freeman drops four rounds. It's amazing. People are so, people are so smart. Put it that way. We'll be nice today. It is Friday. It's about to be a good weekend. I'm actually... Oh, no. What? It's Thursday. <laughs> it's August 1st. It's Thursday. I'm losing it, bro. I've been drinking too many marks. If you're enjoying the video so far, guys, if you're finding it valuable or informational, all I ask is that you scroll down a little bit, hit that thumbs up button. It'll take you two seconds. If you're on the phone, literally just do that. Scroll down, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And... Leave a rating review if you're on the podcast. I would be uh, muy apreciado. Been working on my Spanish. I lost it all. I took like seven years of Spanish in high school. Barely learned a damn word. Hey, Willie. You want to be in my movie? <laughs> uh, so we see, there you go. Royce Freeman, Jalen Samuels go off the board. I'm probably going to have to start looking at tight end. And y'all know I'm not a fan of Austin Hooper. Hooper's a guy who hasn't gone over 75 receiving yards. I found this crazy stat a while back in my in my initial preseason uh, research. Where are you at, though? Um, I'm probably going to actually wait on tight end one more round because I think I'd be fine with either Mark Andrews or Trey Burton. What I normally do is look on the app because it's a lot quicker and smoother and see if any of these guys in between me have not taken a tight end and know whether or not they're going to fall. Let me look at what kind of wide receiver. Dude, I like uh, I like Sterling Shepard falling at a little bit of a value, knowing that Golden Tate's going to be out. But I also don't have that many shares of Cortland Sutton. Grab him. Fuck, tell me we timed out. God damn it. Sorry, y'all. I need to pay attention more. These fast drafts are tough because I'm always talking to you and not really paying attention to my life and what's actually going on. So with Austin Hooper, I mean, the reason I'm hesitant on him is he's just not like... I don't know. He chops away. 71 receptions is pretty good for a tight end. I'm not mad about that. Around 90 targets. But when you look at, like, what he's done, he hasn't gone over, like, 77 receiving yards was his high last year. When you look at the guys, like, he finished as, I think, tight end 6 or 7. But when you look at the guys that finish above him, like, he has no ceiling on a week-over-week basis. He's got an okay floor, but is it really that good? Like, 24 yards, 23 yards, 19 yards. This middle piece right here is nice and appealing but if you also look at the pass defenses Tampa Bay Giants Washington Cleveland eh, then starts going against tougher pass defenses Dallas New Orleans Baltimore Green Bay Arizona 27 yards 31 yards 44 37 0 it gets a little tough I know they play in they're going to be playing Tampa twice a year um, but like Austin Hooper just doesn't seem like a guy with any sort of ceiling and when he plays against tough teams he doesn't do that well so he does not excite me whatsoever but when I look at guys like Mark Andrews or even Dallas Goddard, Dallas Goddard's usually been my tight end too in almost every best ball draft I have because he has literally like league winning upside in a draft like this because the tight end position can get you so far ahead, ahead because you only start one of them, right? So everyone you're playing against starts one tight end that, that week. If you have one of the top three tight ends, you're giving yourself a monster positional advantage where everybody in this league is going to have you know seven or eight wide receivers seven or eight or six or seven running backs, right? So you, they're all pretty much going to produce at a pretty high level on a weekly basis, running back, wide receiver. But when you're only producing one tight end or one quarterback, that can give you such a weekly positional advantage at tight end because it's so top heavy. So if you get a guy like Dallas Goddard and something happens to Zach, like don't draft him as your tight end one, but if you get him and something happens to Zach Ertz, you're almost guaranteed like a top three finish in your league and top three finish gets paid out. The board man gets paid. We all know that. So if you top three, you a board man. Ah, I was hoping Sterling Shepard fell to me. So normally I'll end up with probably seven wide receivers, six running backs. Sometimes depending on you know what I did early, if I'm looking like oh my running backs, if my running backs is looking like a snack, then maybe we'll go with five running backs and and eight wide receivers. Also depending on you know do I have an elite quarterback, I'm gonna go with two or three quarterbacks. I love the pairing of Aaron Rodgers and Lamar Jackson. It's one of my favorite things in the world. I think Lamar Jackson has ridiculous upside. Obviously he yeah, he's a little. Um, nerve-wracking to have because there's definitely risk involved with his accuracy and just shit like that, but you'll know. 
Ooh, I'm starting to love Dante Moncrief here, too. I hope he falls to me. Do not snipe me, you bish. Kalen Blage is a good value. Justin Jackson is a great value. This is what happens when all these running back injuries happen in the summer. I think this is why you need to get on draft right now because you could really... There, there are a few times throughout the offseason where you could really take advantage of ADPs. Um, and I think one of them is one before the NFL draft because we know pretty much what a rookie running back is, right? We could tell from their college production, from their NFL combine performance, where they should fit into an NFL offense. We don't know where they are yet, but you could pretty much pre predict where... Um, Justin Jackson, Caitlin Blage. I'm going to grab Caitlin Blage. I don't think his ADP has adjusted yet. Um, you can pretty much predict, you know, who the top three or four running backs are going to be in terms of draft capital in a real NFL draft, which means as soon as they're drafted, their ADPs are going to shoot up. And I can't tell you the amount of 14th round, 15th round, David Montgomery and Miles Sanders picks I have from April drafts. Like, that is legit. I have those guys. I literally drafted Miles Sanders in the 15th round in like 10 different drafts. So that's one time of the year where you can take advantage of ADPs. And the best part about draft is that they open up drafts like immediately after the season starts. So you could nail ADPs all summer long. It's so ridiculous, actually. Big, big money coming in this year at the HQ. So that's a good time to take advantage. And then when all of these injuries are happening to running backs, a lot of people, you know, people have ridiculous injury optimism when it comes to NFL players. They don't take things seriously. If a if one fucking beat reporter who has an undergrad degree in communications tells you that a guy looks 100%, everyone just assumes he's 100%. Like, people are so fucking naive. It's ridiculous. So, that gives you an opening because most of these guys are not 100%. A lot of the high percentage of these guys will have injuries that linger for a while, which means their backups become a ridiculous value. Like, I'm, I'm someone who said that I believe Melvin Gordon will probably miss the first eight weeks, which means Justin Jackson is going to be probably a 12 to 15 touch guy in a very good offense for at least eight weeks. So I absolutely love that. Um, Justin Jackson down here. I think like Carlos Hyde dealing with the, the hamstring injury, I wouldn't necessarily take him right now because I have Damian Williams. And I think that, you know, drafting two running backs on the same team, you, you know, you're limited in roster spots. So drafting two running backs on the same team limits your upside. And I want upside when we're talking about best ball. I'm not looking for floor. I'm not trying to like play it safe. Um, so I want upside and drafting two backs from the same backfield definitely limits your upside in a, in a game like this. Oh, I love the news that James Washington is not even running as a two out in Pittsburgh because Dante Monker is dealing with some, some kind of injury out there. I'm not sure if we heard reports, if it's like a hamstring injury or a calf strain, but we have the rookie Dante Johnson, third-round rookie pick, is the one running with the ones outside of Juju or Emma. Um, and I know everyone was so mad about me when I said fucking James Washington ain't shit in the beginning of the year. I can't wait for this year to happen and all of my picks be actually like fucking wrong, probably, honestly. Um, what are we looking at here? I like Ito. I love, ooh, yes. I, th I think I almost have to go, ooh, Deion Lewis, Matt Breida. I love both of these guys. There's so much value at running back right now in the later rounds in these best balls. So I keep fading wide receiver and then kind of hate ending up with the wide receivers that I do. Do I like Deion Lewis more? Do I like Matt Breida more? I'm going to go Deion Lewis because I think his path to touches is more clear. Um, but, you know, Derrick Henry dealing with the calf strain is, 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 like I said, more serious than a lot of people probably think. Matt Breida, we have Derrick McKinnon who's on the pup. And, um, dude, I, I want no part of Derrick McKinnon. I think he's... Like, if he's still dealing with this ACL injury, like, a full year afterwards, there's obviously something that went wrong slash is going wrong with it. So, I'm going to stay away from Jarek McKinnon at all costs, which means I really like Matt Breida. If it's Matt Breida and Tevin Coleman in a timeshare, Matt Breida's going to dominate. This offense is going to be very, very much improved. Um, probably win maybe eight games, which means, you know, the running backs are obviously going to benefit from that. What else we got? I got one quarterback. Did Lamar Jackson go? Yeah, Lamar went off the board. I kind of like Kirk Cousins as a quarterback, too. When you have a high upside guy like Aaron Rodgers, I like kind of pairing him with a, with a high floor guy in Kirk Cousins. And you know what? They actually have the lines up on DraftKings right now for um, DraftKings Sportsbook for 2019 player prop bets. And you don't have to have an account or anything in order to see them. So if you want to head over to, what is it, DraftKings.com slash sportsbook. Okay, never mind. That URL just fucked your day up. So don't type that in. But if you go to NFL up here, 
they will have player props. And it's interesting looking at the quarterbacks because it just goes to show like why the one quarterback theory makes sense because the statistics, the points per game in terms of fantasy, like the difference between quarterback seven and quarterback 14 is so negligible because the like their yardage, they're all going to end up between like 4,200 and 4,400 yards. And on a per game basis, it's going to be like 25 extra yards a game, which is like 0.5 fantasy points, which doesn't matter at all. So, you know, when you're looking at these player props, you go to team props, game nines, team futures, player futures. Here we go. Passing yardage. So you look at, okay, so where's Kirk Cousins? Where's Kirky? Kirky. Oh, they don't have Kirk listed. Oh, yeah, they do. 4150. And then you look at, like, Drew Brees, 4200. Look at, let's see, Baker Mayfield, 4325. So Kirk Cousins realistically penciled in for 100 fewer passing yards than Aaron Rodgers per. DraftKings Sportsbook, which is like, you know, insane. Obviously, the touchdown numbers might be higher with Rodgers, but Cousins is a good bet to finish with 28 to 30 touchdowns. He scored 30 touchdowns last year. So it's like, you know, quarterbacks are, um, it's funny how people view quarterbacks. I don't know what point I'm getting at, but I'm probably going to have to look at wide receivers because I feel like wide receivers are low-key the most important position when it comes to drafts. Obviously, you know, you want to have your stud running backs, but because you start three wide receivers, they're a little bit more important. You want to make sure that you have, you know, a lot of good options there. Um, And, you know, I've been trying to get one of either John Brown or Robert Foster at the end of drafts, and I'll probably take that L on Robert Foster considering he's running with the twos right now. Those are the reports out of camp. Let's check Roto World and see if uh, there's any new... New news on that new new uh, Aaron Jones in with the hamstring. We don't want to talk about that. Who the fuck were we looking at? Oh, yeah, Robert Foster. That's not good. But everything coming from John Brown's side has been spectacular. Robert Foster has run exclusively with the second team offense. It makes no fucking sense how he finished last year. He was so good. Two for 94 in a touchdown, seven for 104, four for 108 in a touchdown. Like, how are you going to run him with the twos? It's disrespectful to me and my family. Again, y'all, Draft.com, the Draft app, in iOS, in Google Store. I don't know what the fucking Windows name is. Download it. Add me, Nick Ercolano. Use promo code BDGE when you sign up. You'll get $3 on top of whatever you deposit, your $10, whatever. And um, and then you can draft with me. I start drafts throughout the week all the time. I probably have like 19 best ball drafts running at the moment. I wish I was exaggerating. Let's see. Let's count it for the boys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Holy shit, I actually might have like 22. They're all there. So I will invite you. If you add me on the draft app, I will invite you to these drafts throughout the week. And uh, we could draft together. We can draft together. Uh, I just took David Johnson at the 106. That just fucking broke my heart. Sitting at the 305. My first two picks were Zeke and Mike Evans. Zach Ertz is on the board. Amari Cooper, Adam Thielen. Yeah, I'm going to go with Zach Ertz and shore up that tight end spot. Mwah. Love it. Love it. Yeah, give me Zach Ertz in the middle of the third round all day in Tamara. Also, make sure you're following us on uh, on Instagram. We're putting out other valuable content on there that you ain't going to find on the YouTube channel. It's at Big Dogs Fantasy. So Instagram.com slash Big Dogs Fantasy. On Twitter, you could find me at Nick underscore B D G E. Yeah, I've had this really fucked up thought lately that, and I tweeted this out yesterday, as the business grows, right? I tell you, man, I don't mean to sound like a douchebag or like a, someone who's, I'm not bragging whatsoever. And I ne- I've never done this. I've never created content for the money, but the money's starting to pile in. And um, Big Dogs as a company, I'm excited to do my end of year wrap up video and, you know, break down. I always get like really into the behind the scenes stuff and, you know, tell you how I make my money and different avenues as a creator it's cool to see you know affiliate marketing which i do with draft and sponsorships and selling products and services so if you guys haven't checked out any of my vlogs i suggest you do so we got another one dropping if you're watching this august 2nd um i actually think it might drop later today or sometime this weekend so stay tuned but what do we got oh i'm grabbing muhammad sanu hell yeah with uh with calvin ridley's hamstring injury Big fan of grabbing Muhammad Sanu. Another one that you could just take advantage of with uh, with ADPs. Back to the point, though. Um, we're making some some pretty good money here at the HQ. I didn't think it would happen this early, but um, I'm excited to share with you 
you know, just, you know, what can happen when you really fucking put a lot behind what you're doing um, and you believe in something and, and you do it. And I've, I've had this thought that I would never take investment money at this point just because I see the potential and the growth of, of what we're doing, right? Because if, once you take investment money or once you take a loan, you're basically working for someone else at that point, right? You don't have actual leverage in terms of, I like waking up and being able to put out whatever the fuck I want to put out and say whatever I want to say. However, as soon as you take money, that's no longer the case. You got a boss. You got someone above you that you have to answer to. And I never want that to be the case. But I'm thinking like the opportunity for growth right now is so high and I want to take advantage of it. I almost want to take a loan or take investment money. I don't even know where I'd find it, but I'm sure I could find it somewhere. I want to take a loan or investment money and invest that into the people I work with right now so that they could work full time on this shit and we could set up like a studio in New York and literally just churn out fantasy content 24 seven, like nonstop, just the best shit. Cause I feel like we're at, we're at a place where we don't really have enough scale yet. Our quality is really high in terms of like putting out content on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, wherever the fuck we are. The quality is really high. We just don't have the volume yet, but if I were to invest in these people doing it full time, I'm talking about the entire team, you know, like everyone that works on whether it's fade the public or editing and helping me with content, like six or seven dudes get in a studio and just like all day, every day, just churn out the best shit. And that's how we can get volumized. And then, oh man, it, it, it's eating away at me because I don't really want to do this. Like I know I shouldn't do it, but I kind of really want to do it. And the way I live is based on figuring out things I, you know, like I, I don't want to live with regret ever. And I feel like if I don't do this, I'm going to live with regret, but I also might regret taking money. So fuck, I need help y'all. I need you to convince me not to do this, not to take money. Ooh, Chris Herndon's really dropping, huh? I don't have a tight end two yet. So I kind of like the idea of Chris Herndon here. I know he's going to miss four games, but like after those four games, he's probably going to be a top 12 tight end. And I think, uh, let's see. Who do I have at tight end? Uh, Austin Hooper. God damn. I don't think they don't have their buy until later in the year. So I will have Austin Hooper in the lineup every week until then. But I'll grab Chris Herndon by week four. Where was Austin Hooper's by week? I don't know. It's somewhere on here. But um, that's also something to take into consideration. And it's a lot easier to navigate on the draft. The draft app is just so smooth. Um, you could see the bye weeks a lot more clearly on there. So Austin Hooper has week nine bye. Chris Herndon week four. Aaron Rodgers has week 11. So I, you want to make sure that you're not stacking too many buys together because obviously that's going to hurt your team. Um, that's a question I get asked pretty often actually too. Like how often do I look at bye weeks when I'm drafting? In a season long league? No, what's not not at all. I could care less. Like I'll draft four fucking wide receivers with the same buy. By the time that buy comes in week nine, like your team has changed, you're gonna have new players on it, and you're, I mean, it's it, it, it's a give and take. Like obviously, you like to have a scattered mix of not having everyone on a buy for one week. Maybe you'll take an L that week, but that means while you, well, the other weeks when all your wide receivers are at full strength, other, you know, other teams that you're playing against your league mates are the ones that are having guys in their lineup with buys. So you know, it's not like I don't think there's one set strategy where it's like, yeah, you want to avoid buys in certain weeks and shit. So that's the way I look at that. So we have one tight end. We have two tight ends. Quarterback. Um, quarterback gets kind of messy. So we have Derek Carr, Sam Darnold, Dalton, Foles, Marcus Mariota, Fitzpatrick, Joe Flacco. It is the fucking bottom of the barrel here. Guys, you don't want on your fantasy team. Um, so normally I'll look at it and be and, and really just decipher it through who I think the best offense is going to be, who has the best weapons, and choose from the bottom of the bunch. It might be Derek Carr here. I might like him the most out of what the guys on this list are. Sam Darnold, I think he's like one year away from really breaking out. I like the direction the team is going. I don't think they're really there yet to consider Darnold like a breakout candidate. Dalton's fucked. That offense is already losing offensive linemen. Lost A.J. Green. Love Tyler Boyd, but I want nothing to do with Andy Dalton this year. Nick Foles, I want nothing to do with that Jacksonville offense. Marcus Mariota is an interesting case. Um, I was a fan of Marcus Mariota. I liked the upside, the rushing upside that he brought as like a 16th, 17th round best ball pick. But we just dropped the Marcus Mariota right up in the draft thing. And, oh, I don't think I changed the injury risk rating on here. That's supposed to be a 7.5, I believe. So I'll actually edit that up. But his injury risk is, is very, very, very high. 
um, according to Dr. Morris. And he dealt with, like, a lot of people are just like, oh, he was injured last year. Like, oh, he had no nerve damage in his elbow or whatever. It's like, that's like a fucking serious injury. Like, why are we just going to write that off as if, like, nothing about Mariota is considered injury prone now, you know? Like, that might as- that might happen. Kind of like taking Ryan Fitzpatrick, too. Apparently, he's way ahead of Josh Rosen in the quarterback battle. But I don't want to draft a guy that might end up, you know, sitting eight games. You don't want zeros ever in your lineup, especially not at the quarterback position that puts up, like, the highest weekly numbers. <laughs> Boy, there is not a lot of... Uh goodness left at the wide receiver position so Antonio Callaway I talked about as a guy that I like drafting at the end of drafts also might have to take an L on that because he's been running with the twos um in Cleveland Rashard Higgins is running as the wide receiver three so we're gonna fade him there and I'll grab Sam Darnold I don't hate him as my quarterback two in the 15th round Robbie Anderson Quincy Nunwa I don't like Le'Veon Bell where he's being drafted but he's obviously a good weapon for Darnold in this offense um, so as my quarterback too, I already have Aaron Rodgers, so I'm kind of depending on him to put up, you know, most of the production. So I don't think quarterback two is like the biggest, oh no. Miles Sanders just went down with a foot injury. Say it ain't so. Fuck my day up, fam. Man, I really like Miles Sanders. Let me get some uh, breaking news on this. Hold on. Miles Sanders down momentarily. Looked like trainers were looking at his left foot. Got up slowly. Walked off on his own. Sanders went to the medical tent for a bit. Now heading back out on the field. Doug firm. Doug confirms it was Sanders' foot. Says he is fine. Doug did note that they'll do some tests. I'm glad you could all join me on this mild injury journey. Okay, so that's absolutely a situation to monitor. That would shoot Jordan Howard up draft boards, obviously. Uh, Miles Sanders... I. I I still think Miles Sanders is going to be a guy who could potentially win you leagues over the second half of the year. He's tough to really pay up for in redraft only because you might have to just sit him on the bench for six or seven weeks until he takes over that backfield. We've seen so many like reports just going back and forth on Sanders. It's like, oh, he's not good at pass blocking. Oh, he's not good at uh, fucking, you know, doing anything, whatever. All the reports have been bad. And then all of a sudden we come out. Miles Sanders has looked apart so far in Eagles camp. Like, which, what is it? What is it here? What are we doing here, people? I love Sanders. I just think his athletic profile, he has the upside of being um, a Melvin Gordon type, where he's not like 225 or 230, but the athletic measurables, the draft capital, like he done it all. He produced in college as soon as Saquon Barkley was out of the picture. Um, And I think he's similar to like Marlon Mack, who, you know, couldn't get healthy and then eventually got healthy over the second half of the year, took over that backfield and was just the guy and dominated. And Philly's going to be a phenomenal offense, really good offensive line, really good weapons, which is obviously a good thing for any running back. So, uh, Miles Sanders is a guy I'm definitely intrigued by, but with all, you know, there's just a lot happening with Miles Sanders right now between the hype and now this foot injury. Hopefully it's not serious, but I'm not going to take another quarterback. No, we do not want you, Jamal Williams. You are hurt with a hamstring injury. There are not a lot of running backs left that I want. Let's look at what we got going on for wide receivers. Tight end. I probably need to grab another tight end because I don't have... I have Chris Herndon as my backup, and he's suspended, so... We're actually going to go with, no, we're going to go with Ricky Seals-Jones over Mike Gusecki. Tiebreaker here is the offense. Always go with the better offense as a tiebreaker. Is Arizona going to be good? I don't know. But they're going to run a shitload of plays, and I think Ricky Seals-Jones is still the guy there at tight end. And I think he's going to surprise a lot of people because he was quietly really, really, really efficient last year. He was soaking up targets when he was on the field. He only ran like 16 routes per game, but I believe his target share on those routes for 27 percent which is a really high number so we're leaking into the last two rounds 17th 18th round if y'all have stuck around with me for this long i appreciate you i don't know why you would ever do that but got a lot of love for you make sure that you uh make sure you comment down below let me know that you stuck around this long plus it helps the youtube al- algorithm so i love you for that melvin gordon's agent requested a trade he wants to play man he really wants to play he won't it. Okay, let's see what happens. Um, in about 20 minutes, I'm heading into Manhattan to go record at the Fantasy Sports Network studio, which I'm pretty excited about. Makes me feel a little bit official, you know? Um, so that'll be fun. I'm getting on the podcast with uh, Frank Stampful. I believe it's called the FBB's pod. I'm not even actually sure, to be honest. But I tweeted out the link. Yes, yeah, so if you're watching this today, August 1st, or August 2nd, then... You don't give a shit because it already happened. 
God damn it, why am I even talking about it? You can go watch the replay on their YouTube uh, channel, though, which I will link down below, which I'll also probably forget to link down below, so probably also not. But it's the Fantasy Sports Network. There are no vowels in fantasy. They wouldn't let me film in their studio. Another reason why I would never sell out, because, like, why the fuck wouldn't you want me to film in your studio? I bring in probably double the amount of viewers that you have watching your stuff. We're actually getting on... There's a, a WWE guy, a wrestling guy, that's going to be coming onto the show with us. So I'm going to film with Frank. I don't know who Eric Young is. I don't watch WWE anymore, but Eric Young is going to be Skyping in and talking with us, which is pretty, uh, <laughs> which is pretty funny. I don't think we ever talked about the Andrew Luck thing, did we? God damn it. I always go off on these tangents. This, how do I remember that 40 minutes later? I feel like this draft is taking so damn long, people. Make your picks. I'm sorry. I'm going off for no reason. Y'all don't deserve that. I don't deserve you, to be honest. Um, yeah, so Andrew Luck, this calf thing happened back in April. Like, how many calf strains go on for four months? I'm a little bit nervous about it. I'd be lying if I wasn't. So, ooh, I love J.J. Arcega Whiteside. They're just talking about how dominant he's been at camp. But I also kind of want to get Trey Quinn here, but I also don't. People are so excited. Like, oh, people literally, the only analysis they have on Trey Quinn is like, oh, he's going to be a starting slot receiver in Washington. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Jameson Crowder has sucked the last three years. I don't want the starting slot receiver in a shitty offense. Get the fuck out of my face with fucking Trey Quinn. Give me J.J. Arcega Whiteside all day. All day. All the reports from camp is just that he's dominant. He's dominant in the red zone. We already knew that coming in. Great contested catch guy. Great red zone guy. Um, back to Andrew Luck, though. Four months going on the calf strain. There was a little bit of a setback, and he's still not healthy yet. That's terrifying. And I saw an interview with him. He's getting all emotional. He's like, yeah, I have a lot of emotional scars from the shoulder thing, so I promised myself I would never rush back and always, you know, tell my body the truth about how I feel. I don't know. It's a situation to monitor. It might be more serious than we think. If the Colts... Ugh, if Andrew Luck misses time this year, it's going to fuck up everything. Because I absolutely love... You know I love Marlon Mack, but that's shot if Andrew Luck's not in the lineup. T.Y. Hilton's a phenomenal value at the end of third rounds of drafts right now. I'm going to cry, y'all. Um, the fuck was I even talking about? All right, last round pick, y'all. We have seven wide receivers. We have five running backs. Um, let's see what we got at, at the run and bike position. Benjamin Snell. Nah, Rex Burkett. I'm going to go with Dexter Williams. You know, we were talking about him before. He could have a sizable role in this Green Bay offense, which is what I want pieces of. You want pieces of these good offenses. Who else we got down here? Not a single motherfucker that I want on my team. Yeah, take Josh Gordon. Take zeros all day in your lineup. Listen, you only got 18 guys on your roster, and they're going to slot in the best players each week. I'm not trying to take guys who are probably going to be zeros in my lineup. So we go with Dexter. We round out the team with, I think I have like four Green Bay guys on my roster, to be honest. Where is my roster team? Let's go to my team. So this is the final roster. Aaron Rodgers and... Sam Donald as my quarterback. I'm okay going with just two if I have a front-loaded guy like Aaron Rodgers. At tight end, we have Austin Hooper, Chris Herndon, and rookie Seals Jones. Running back, Dalvin Cook, Damian Williams, Lamar Miller, Kalen Balaj, Deion Lewis, Dexter Williams. You know, the top-heavy guys are a little bit nerve-wracking. We have Damian Williams already dealing with the hamstring, and we know Dalvin Cook's obviously a little bit of an injury risk himself, but I'm glad we kind of um, masked ourselves with a little bit of a floor in Lamar Miller, Kalen Balaj, Deion Lewis. Probably could have been better there, but I really like the wide receivers. Andrew Hopkins, Julian Edelman, Tyler Boyd, John Miles, and John Brown, Muhammad Sanu, J.J. Arcega Whiteside. They should be able to hold me afloat for a 12-team league. I am not upset about this roster whatsoever. Let me know your thoughts on it. Let me know what you would have done differently. Go sign up on Draft.com, the Draft app. Use promo code BDGE when you sign up. Add me at Nick Colano. You can only add me, I believe, um, through the app. I'm not sure you could add people on the mo uh, the desktop version so if you have a question about that that is why it probably wouldn't work subscribe to the channel if you're new go cop the draft guide on bigdogdraftguide.com if you have not already there's like a million tools and so much player analysis on here you won't need anything else i promise you that and oh the big dogs got to eat bible drops on monday i love you i'm out um it was great 
talking into a microphone, talking to you for the last hour. Peace.